I asked my wife what she wanted for Christmas, and she said she wanted her family to stop eating on the floor. As upset as our dog was about this idea, I gave it some serious thought. Sure, I had an old TV tray we could share, but I didn't think that was going to be a good Christmas gift, especially after the vacuum fiasco of 2013. So, I did what any enterprising do-it-yourselfer would do. I started designing. I made hugely ambitious plans to build an amazing table that I thought I could complete in a couple of weeks while I was going to graduate school and working full time and raising two young kids and oh yeah we were moving houses too. Ambition may be a desirable trait but I'm here to tell you it's not all it's cracked up to be. Apparently you can try and do too much at once. Apparently I'm not Superman. Oh I know I couldn't believe that either. This idea started to form in my head. My in-laws had an old fur beam that they used to use for a mantelpiece in their house. And it seemed fitting to use that piece of my wife's childhood home as the centerpiece of this table I was going to build. While I was in school, I was doing deeper dives into the study of values. And the thought of making a legacy piece for my family, something that could be handed down to my children perhaps, well, that had a nice ring to it. I'd always really liked the combination of steel with wood, so I used that as a jumping off point for design. And because I had this gorgeous Douglas fir mantelpiece to base this around, Douglas fir seemed like a great option. I spent some time in my CAD program of choice, in my case SolidWorks, and came up with this beauty. Looked pretty good to me. The base of the tabletop is 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and for the top, I had some leftover engineered fur flooring. This would be super stable and bond well to the plywood. Once I had that down, I trimmed the edges with solid Douglas fur and mitered the corners. Considering I'm no professional, I was pretty happy with the result. I absolutely love the green pattern of this fur, tight green and straight. Uh, really adds a nice natural element to this table that's gonna really stand out against the metal. Overall, I'm very happy with the results. Let's move on. The wood beam needed a little bit of cleanup work. It had been over top of a wood burning fireplace for years, and it does contain a sap pocket. But given that this piece has some sentimental value attached to it, I just looked at it as adding character to the build. This type of wood just isn't available anymore either. This is old growth Douglas fir from British Columbia. Not a lot of those trees around, and certainly not a lot of them being milled these days. This 150 pound tabletop was going to need a pretty serious set of legs to stand on. I started with 3 8 by 5 inch flat bar. This is heavy stuff, so I had a local company roll it for me. My plan initially was to build my own roller, but based on how heavy this steel was, I was going to have to build something a lot bigger than I'd need for most other projects. Rather than hire my local welder, I figured I'd be better off welding it myself. It turned out to be a lot trickier than I thought it would be. These box sections were straightforward, but those curves had so much stress inherent in them, as soon as heat was applied, they wanted to straighten out. That made for some pretty interesting challenges and a lot of rework and tweaking along the way. But we got it done in the end. It did take a lot longer than I care to admit, though. For finishing, I looked at a bunch of options, but settled on some pre-catalyzed lacquer. This is oil-based stuff and high VOC, so you got to make sure you're wearing proper safety gear when you spray this. And to spray it, I used my Fuji Semi Pro 2. Click in the upper right for my unboxing video. I decided on a satin sheen, because I just think it looks more pro when you finish it off. Open this stuff up and wow, does it smell. Make sure you got your mask on. Because of the satin finish, all the solids tend to sink to the bottom, so you really got to make sure you keep it stirred as you go along. I don't have a paint booth or anything even closely resembling one, so I ended up doing this with the doors open in my shop, putting down some drop cloths, and then jumping right in.
I am not a professional painter by any stretch. But I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night, just like back in 2013. Lots of sheen here that you can see as it's wet, but overall it looked pretty even. We'll see how it dries. Here's the tabletop after a coat too. It's partially dry in this, so it looks quite uneven. One of my other challenges with this build is how is I going to keep a 350 pound table from marking our hardwood floors? I thought about making a wooden base for it to go under the steel feet, but from a design perspective, that wasn't going to give me the look I wanted. I thought maybe I could use my 3D printer and print something that was really unassuming. So I started designing. I wanted to make sure that I could put felt pads underneath this as well. So I left a little pocket in the design for felt pads. Hit the print button, and 12 short hours later, I had four feet for my table. I printed these out of PLA plastic, 100% fill just for strength. I've got to say these 3D printers, they're amazing, especially for what you pay for them. This Ender, printer that I'm using here was $300 on Amazon and I've been printing almost non-stop with it. It's amazing to be able to put your ideas into solid form with really minimal effort. And using some of the higher quality plastics out there, you can actually make a pretty amazingly strong piece in the end too. When I started designing this table over a year ago, I did not think I would have any plastic parts involved. This table was supposed to be heavy, was supposed to be an heirloom, was supposed to be high quality. And at the end, plastic was the perfect solution to solve this foot problem. I was really happy with the result. Thanks for coming along and joining me on this. Do you want to see the results? like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting out new videos every week. See you later.